So I'm just going to start first of all with some dry marks and the marks just go on so easily on this beautiful gesso and I'm always trying to just you know go really dark and really light um, really small and really big and you know here's a cray pause I might try some of that I'm not going to worry about these marks smearing or doing anything I'm just going to kind of have fun and I'm also going to mix up the, the kinds of materials that I use maybe I'll use a straight line at times here's the painter's edge works like a ruler if you really want to fix your marks uh, you can put a little bit of cold wax medium over that so if I take a tool like a silicone tool and it still may smear a little bit but you know it, it's going to lock in some of these things anyways it will go a little darker so notice how I've kind of locked in those marks you can take my brayer and the first thing you want to do is you want to charge your brayer so um, that just means that you take a little bit of paint and I have this little separate palette here so I can show you underneath the camera but if I put some yellow paint here move this out of the way charging your brayer just means that you're going to roll your brayer through the paint in different directions here's a diagonal that way this way and pretty soon what you're going to do is hear this little tackiness and then you look at your brayer and it looks like a really nice even coat so that works really well for charging your brayer and then you can always recharge it so on a dry surface you know brayering is super easy and because the brayer has this um, you know these edges that are very very sharp just notice the control you have you've got a very nice hard edge you may like that you know maybe you like geometric shapes so then you can charge your brayer again and you can go in a different direction now that's a pretty solid yellow but if you go fast then you can see how it's just very light there's hardly any paint left on here now you can keep doing this and if you want more paint you just charge your brayer that's fine and RF pigment sticks are also wonderful here happens to be a ultramarine blue just a little bit that I have left here um, it's a stub but I had to um, take the um, the dried edge off with a razor blade and this is pretty cool like a couple things you can do obviously it'll go right onto that board and it's really beautiful um, and that's really great but then you can um, a couple things you can take the same brayer that you just used over here with the yellow this is all about experimentation you're not going to worry about anything there's nothing wrong or right about doing anything but notice this brayer is going to pick up that blue there it goes and it's going to um, put it down elsewhere now if I go through this again I can come down here and spread those beautiful marks and you know if you just go in all these different directions how fun is that uh, just a little bit of blue over here so you're kind of using your brayer as like a monoprint tool so your brayer can be a monoprint tool that's true but let's try some um, a little bit more blue maybe uh, let's put a dark line here kind of a juicy line like that so then you can take wax paper or deli paper or palette paper freezer paper um, anything that kind of you know resists the paint well this happens to be deli paper and you can get this anywhere at a grocery store uh, so if you wanted to like take that mark and duplicate it this is an example of a monoprint you just lightly go over it like this and I'm doing it with an RNF pigment stick but it could have been just plain paint right so then maybe I'll put it over here or maybe I'll go like that and then you just take your finger or you could use a brayer if you want um, you'll find with different types of touch you're going to get different effects so if I go in here again another thing I could do is like take a pencil and I can draw through this like this now I have a different monoprint right so let's say I go here just lay it down and just gently go over the top you're going to get a different kind of mark 
So that's monoprinting. That's one type of monoprinting. Even though I'm only using two colors, cadmium yellow light and ultramarine blue and black and white, I don't consider black and white colors, um, this is the swatch I did with that palette. So you can see the wide variety of tints, tones, and shades that you get when you mix either yellow or blue with just white, black, or gray, or if you mix the yellow with the blue and then mix that resultant color with white, gray, or black. I mean, it's just endless. This could go on and on and on, but um, it shows you how versatile your color is. The newsprint is acting as a mask. You know, wherever the newsprint is, it's not gonna allow me to put that paint down. So maybe I just go like this. And yes, there are colors I'm going over, but for now, I'm just kind of playing. And maybe I'll just go up here to avoid that blue for now. And let's say that I just take this and I smear it like this because I like a big mark like that. Okay, so just randomly I'm going to put it like that and gently put that down there. And now I'm, I've made a very unique mark as a monoprint. It's pretty cool. You can also take this, now that you have it, um, you can put it down anywhere and again take like a pencil and make some marks like that. That's different. Or put it down like this and squish it down. And keep the sheet parallel to the surface and just pull. Whoops. And I think I'm going to pull it in this direction because it'll have further to go. It's not going to do a whole lot, but um, just something you can try. It's a different kind of mark. It's a very rough edge and a beautiful edge. Another thing you can do is take some Gamzol. You could take a brush as well and you don't need a very big brush because this is not a very big panel, but uh, if you put a little bit of Gamzol here, take your brush and just soften that edge. It's liquefying the paint. That's what Gamzol does. It thins it out. You can add more. Maybe you like that effect. In fact, if you put enough on, you'll go all the way down to the white gesso. But I'm just showing you how you can manipulate your paint with a brush. That gesso is very absorbent. So it's, um, I can feel it grabbing this paint. But that allows you to get a very different kind of edge. So you can experiment with Gamzol. And then to clean out your brush, all you need to do is put a little bit of cooking oil on it, like this, here. And then just get a paper towel and make sure that you get the paint out. You know, it's not very hard, but it's good to do it, you know, when you think about it, because if you forget, then it will dry. If that does happen, you can use Murphy's Oil Soap to clean it. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on there. And you just keep doing that until there's no more color. I would call that pretty good. It's good to have a slot board. I've got some leftover paint here, and this is my ongoing slot board. It gets pretty full of all different colors. So I've got some, um, this is like wallpaper that has a texture to it, and this is just some foam that I think goes underneath furniture so it doesn't slip. You know, there are just so many places that you can find these things. And if you've got wet enough paint, and you know you can do this on many layers of your painting, not just at the beginning, but I happen to have some thick paint here. So if I go over this thick part, I am lifting some paint right here. You can see how I did that. But I can then move it over to here, like this. Just go over it with your brayer. That works. And in that way you're transferring that pattern around and notice how it, it caught some of the blue and you could put it down again and just keep seeing how far you can go with just a little bit of paint like that. 